After a long time looking, nearly two years in fact, I finally managed to snag one of the world's most powerful 128 megabyte graphics cards ever made, with this one coming all the way from Russia. Now, another package showing up on the channel. And this time, you don't have to run scared, as this isn't some sort of scam I bought from China. No, this is a legitimate product tracked down and traced all the way from Russia, but more where I got it from later. For now, why don't we actually get this thing open and find out what exactly is going on? So despite the fact that this is quite a rare card, it was packaged in a less than admirable way, but the seller did say he would actually include the box that he bought it in way back in 2008. And for those of you with the ability to read, you've probably already figured out this is a NVIDIA GeForce 9500 GT. But wait a second. The 9500 GT didn't come out all too long ago, and for those of you with keen ears, you probably already noticed I set the release date. Yes, I know, it's very strange to find this card. It's why it's so bloody rare, because it's a modernish graphics card with only 128 megabytes of VRAM. It's absolutely insane. So why don't we get this all unboxed and cleaned up, and I'll tell you a little bit more of where this card came from, why I've spent so long trying to track it down, and what the actual story is. Now, this story begins a couple of years ago, when I was trying to track down the last 128 megabyte graphics card, a bit like I did with my old 256 megabyte card video on the 8800 GT. But the thing is, 128 megabytes of VRAM is such a small amount that it didn't make sense for any modernish cards to utilize it, as HD resolutions were becoming more and more common, and anything you want to run on a card like that, well, it's just going to be impossible because the VRAM's too small. That is, of course, until I did some deep diving, and I managed to find some references to a 9500 GT BIOS that only mentioned 128 megabytes of RAM on board. From here, the story got even deeper, as I managed to track down some budget vendors with less than great reputations, selling what apparently were 9500 GTs with this minuscule amount of RAM. But the thing is, I could never track one down. They did seem to exist, but they didn't seem to exist today in 2020. However, there was a little information out there and a few listings that showed me that the cars did indeed make it to the general public. From here, once again as I said, the story does get deeper, I managed to get this card sent to me by a fella in Russia, and he and a few other people he knows in Europe managed to buy these cards from brands like Inno3D, Point of View, and a few other lower end brands that you still see around today, and they ended up being sold with cut down VRAM in some less than stellar stores. See, this card has the VRAM covered on the box, because it doesn't actually have 1GB of VRAM like the box advertises. See, the truth lies far from that, so what exactly have we been sent? So, this right here is the NVIDIA GeForce 9500 GT, a card that I previously slated on the channel in my last review it, because it had no real purpose, and well, the era it's from, all of the mid-range cards were pretty useless, but this one in particular was more useless. However, if you're talking about meaningless cards, we have the most meaningless version of this card. Released way back in 2008 and hitting the shells of Europe and Russia and probably a few other more obscure markets, these cards were apparently rife in local stores and cheap internet auctions, with many being highly volatile and unstable, hence their current rarity 12 years later. Complete with 32 CUDA cores and clock speeds pushing 550 MHz, I know what you're thinking, wow, this thing is a powerhouse. And well, when you pair it with 128 megabytes of DDR2, you can really understand why. But for those of our viewers with keen eyes, you've probably noticed this card has 1GB of VRAM clearly there on board, and you would indeed be correct. But remember I said these cards were unstable? Well, the VRAM is actually cut entirely in the BIOS. There were of course some legitimate releases which had 128 megabytes where they'd remove the VRAM physically from the card, but it appears that most people that I've managed to speak to have never seen these cards sold on their markets and said that they did exist and they've heard of people having them, but they never really sold because it didn't make sense and it wasn't cost effective to make them this way. However, when people did end up buying these style of cards, they only really bought it because it was cheap. And during this era, if you didn't have the money for a 9800 GT or a 9600 GT, then anything below that, although a gaming card, was going to rip you off. But apparently, given these cards were sold in such a crippled state and probably had a less than genuine creation in the black market, they were super cheap to get a hold of back then. Still, 12 years later, the card has managed to prove itself the last and the most powerful card to ever make it to the market with this minuscule amount of VRAM. So why don't we stick this card into a computer and see just how well it holds up. 
Once again, we are indeed using my main PC. I know it's a little bit overkill, but we really want to see just how much 128 megabytes of VRAM limits us in 2020. We've got DirectX 10 support, modern-ish drivers that are only a couple of years old. But anyway, let's see if it's a fun ride and what we can actually get to launch on this card. So to start us off in the low end, I decided I'd run CSGO because it's a source game and even though it's a bit more demanding now than it used to be, it's still a game that you'd imagine would run. And well, the only way we saw anything remotely playable was with incredibly low settings in a very low resolution. And the game did tend to hover around the 30fps region, but it would never see 100% utilisation as the VRAM was such a huge limit. Increasing the resolution even slightly would absolutely tank the frame rate down to abysmal levels, where the game was more of a slideshow. Still, the game could run on the card if you were going to use absolutely tiny settings. But it's much worse than a usual 9500 GT, where I'll be showing some results from that near the end of the video. Anyways, for a surprise we have here GTA 5 running in 800x600 with no shadows and settings so low that I'm pretty sure most PS2 games would actually look nicer than this. The game did however run okay, and not too badly. The VRAM of course was being fully utilised, but the card was also seeing more utilisation itself than CSGO did, with only 4% of the card on average not being used. VRAM was of course completely pegged out and any time we looked into the distance, utilisation would drop even more on the card front. And of course so would our frame rate. Still, the game ran on 128MB of VRAM, which is probably down to the game's optimizations, more so than the card here. But hey, it does show that the world's most powerful 128MB card can run GTA 5. The Master Chief Collection launched and that was about as far as we got with it. I didn't think the game would even launch, but the card did it, but as soon as anything graphical needed to be loaded, or you know, you launched the game in a resolution that was too high anyway, the game would indeed crash with a critical error. Mostly I'm going to put this down to lack of API support, and well, having very little to no VRAM to work with. Skyrim did actually run pretty well. But even in the lowest settings once again, the card was unable to see proper utilisation, this time topping out mostly in the high 80% region, and frame rate fluctuations were extremely common. We did occasionally see 90% utilisation of the card when nothing else was going on in screen, but it was still in that 30 to 40 FPS region. And it's no surprise that the game was playable, given that this was also a similar situation to the PS3 version of the game. However, this is a game running on a very unique engine, and one that is also very VRAM heavy and doesn't tend to like cards very well. Minecraft was actually one of the best experiences we had on the card. We finally saw a high definition resolution and a decent frame rate to boot. It was actually pretty close to a standard 9500 GT in terms of frame rate, but we still didn't see 100% utilisation. However, resolution didn't have the same huge impact we were seeing in other titles. And this was of course using the latest version of the game, so the fact the game ran as well as it did is surprising and also proves that Minecraft is not a very VRAM heavy game even with the newest versions. But can the card run Crisis? I mean, it's a bit of an insane question to ask, but yes, with lower settings I could indeed launch the game. But do not believe that VRAM counter I put there, it is not very accurate whatsoever, and is the reason I got rid of it, as it could also crash the games for some reason, down to me trying to monitor the VRAM usage. However, Crisis does indeed run on a 128MB VRAM card that is limited by other areas more so than the VRAM. It's a very strange experience, but one that was indeed playable. Now, don't get me wrong, I did try plenty of other games on the PC, but the lack of VRAM meant that any modern titles that did actually utilise the APIs this card can actually run would just crash when they tried to launch. I tried Just Cause 2, Black Mesa and a few others and I just couldn't get them to run properly. You know, I think it's just down to this card having such a small amount of VRAM present and it detects the cards a modern 9500 GT. So it doesn't sort of see those two as being the same thing. But it is. So yeah, the performance seems okay. Most of the games have issues with that amount of VRAM and won't launch and when they do, they have killer issues with draw distances and, you know, trying to load things in properly. But to compare the card to a proper 9500 GT, we can see in most cases 
The card was pretty similar at lower resolutions, but when you started to increase the resolutions, which worked absolutely fine on a standard 9500, this just wasn't the case with this 128 megabyte version. We just couldn't run anything in high definition resolutions at all. And even when we could, you know, they were simple titles that ran pretty well on virtually every card ever released. But still, I don't think anyone ever expected us to be using this weird budget release 12 years on, and I don't think any of us would have realised this was the most powerful 128 megabyte card. I'd still say GTA 5 was definitely a surprise though. Now, to touch ever so slightly a bit more on the card's history, a few people have claimed that there was a rare 9800 GT with only 128 megabytes of VRAM, and that would indeed be a more powerful card than this. But it seems the only trace of these ever being made are BIOSes created by modders that are there for overclocking purposes, so that they can limit the VRAM and then see how high they can push it. Whereas these cards that we're testing today actually have a proper commercial release and has actually been verified. And well, I've actually been able to get a hold of one. All in all, I've sent a few emails to Inno3D asking if they have any knowledge on these cards being sold, but given this card's obscurity and the fact it's a very rather strange under the table release, I doubt they actually have any real knowledge on them being sold. You know, I'll let you know if there's a reply and probably put it in a pinned comment, but I'm pretty sure that considering this is not a properly licensed video card, despite what it says on the front of the box, we're gonna go with I'm getting no reply. So, in the conclusion, there we have it. The final and most powerful 128 megabyte graphics card in the world. And I mean, other than the fact that this card is now a piece of history I've managed to document, it's still incredibly interesting and obscure, and pretty rare. I've just never heard of anyone covering this card before. Either way, if you want to do some bog-standard tasks with 128 megabytes of VRAM, it is still usable. There are things that would struggle, like Discord streaming, which would just crash the application, and OBS would suffer if you left the preview turned on. But it's not like we have much VRAM to play with, or a powerful card in the first place. Once again, the main thing that impressed me was GTA 5 running on the card, the Master Chief Collection actually launching, and the fact that such a little amount of VRAM gave a pretty smooth experience on the desktop. You know, I was using this thing for videos, searching around, running around, talking to people, all those types of things, and it ran absolutely fine. Either way, I've tried to get as much research together to condense this down into what I can of a video. Most people I've spoken to about this don't really want to be named, so thank you very much for speaking to me and actually, you know, talking to me on this topic I've been trying to research. It's been very interesting, and uh, I hope you've all enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. So, another little bit of history documented. I hope you've all enjoyed this video. You can always like and subscribe for more, support us on Patreon, follow us on Twitter, and do whatever you want to do. Thank you very much.